Hello everyone, my name is Techno and today we're going to be talking about what does a cloud support engineer actually do? Many of my friends and family ask me the same question, so I figured I might as well make a video about this so that way you know what to expect and maybe if this is something that you want to do later down the line. I'm going to be summarizing this into three different key points. Key point number one will be explaining about what a cloud support engineer actually does according to AWS. Key point number two will be about what I personally think about a cloud support engineer, kind of the roles and responsibilities of it. And lastly, for number three, I'll be explaining what a cloud support engineer does on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's begin by looking at the definition of what a cloud support engineer is by none other than AWS. Check this out. So, as a cloud support engineer, you will act as a cloud ambassador across all cloud products. To me, I thought that was a pretty cool thing when I read that. I was like, huh. Cloud ambassador, what, what does that even mean? But I'll tell you more on key point number two, so stay tuned for that. So if you go on the website, you'll see that they even define what you do on a day-to-day -day basis as a cloud support engineer. So I'm gonna list a few bullet points over here. So number one is learning groundbreaking technologies. I would say that's kind of true. You're learning services that are, have been pioneered by AWS. And then key point number two says, apply troubleshooting techniques and unique solutions. That's also true because when you're working with customers, you have to find out what the root cause of the issue is and then provide a solution for them. So based on the bullet points, I would say that I 100% can back that up. Everything, those two bullet points are absolutely true. You have to work with different services and you have to understand how to provide a solution for that customer. If you scroll down at the very bottom of the website, They'll say something along the lines of AWS Premium Support is a 24-7, 365 day support and that work shifts include nights, weekends, and holidays. Don't be scared. Just because it says nights, weekends, and holidays does not mean that you are going to be working nights, weekends, and holidays. So personally for me, in my shifts, I actually work on uh, 9 to 5. Uh, I'm basically just any other full-time job that you would see out there. The only difference is that those nights, weekends, and holidays are shifts that engineers could take. You know, I think one of the coolest things about AWS is that we basically have like a baton pass from engineer to engineer because we have like a follow the sun model. So no matter where you are, what time zone you're in, there's gonna be an engineer readily available. Okay, let's move on to key point number two, which is my opinion about cloud support engineering and kind of what is it cloud support engineer is supposed to do. So usually for me, I'll just go ahead and start my shift and sometimes I'll be working with customers. Um, I can work with sometimes one customer on that day, or maybe multiple, maybe two or three or four. Four is a little bit excessive, but between two and three is like the sweet spot. And whenever I'm working with these customers, I am identifying what problem they are having and then just finding a solution for them. So I can go ahead and read more articles, find a solution that works for them basically. That's, that's all there is to it. And if I'm not working on, uh, if I'm not working with customers, going on customer meetings, the next thing I'm doing is either sending out emails to those customers, or I could be having one-on-ones with, um, with other engineers. And uh, I could even have team standups or maybe even other smaller meetings. Um, I can't go too much in detail, but that's basically the gist of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can just imagine all those things taking up maybe an hour, sometimes two, and spreading it out through my entire work shift. So what do you do in your free time, right? There's gotta be some time when you're free. And that is true to a certain extent. If you're not having internal meetings, if you're not working with a customer, you can spend your free time studying. You can spend that free time Working on a service, whether that's creating labs or just understanding more about that service in terms of troubleshooting, or you could be learning a completely new thing or studying for a certification as an example. I've been waiting for a very long time to make this video because when I got hired, I was a cloud support associate. Not a cloud support engineer, but an associate. And looking back at it now, I would say the biggest difference is the knowledge gap. Because when I was a cloud support associate, I knew nothing. I didn't know anything about the cloud industry in general. I just thought that, okay, I've heard of AWS, but I don't really know what they do. And now that I've been working with AWS for almost a year now, and I've learned a lot of networking services, I realized that as a cloud support associate, 
you do drown in information. There's so many things that you'll have to learn, but I think that's the beauty of being somebody who's completely new to an industry. It might suck in the beginning because you feel like you don't know anything and you develop this thing called imposter syndrome, but over time you'll realize, huh, I'm actually getting the hang of this. And the more cases I work with, the more I read, the more knowledge and education you get. And so now that I'm a class support engineer, I basically do everything that I did back then as a class support associate. There's nothing different. The only thing that I would say is added on top is me now writing articles and me trying to understand the service more in advance, more of what happens on the back end, and figuring out how to kind of just take in that information and work on different side projects. One of my main side projects that I'm going for right now is just educating other people about it because one thing that I think I excel at is just teaching people. I'm very passionate about it, hence this whole YouTube. And so I'm gonna continue doing that and hopefully um, you know, it takes off because I think my biggest inspiration is Tech With Lucy. If you guys haven't seen her, you guys should watch her videos. Very informative and I would say that She's the reason why I'm actually starting these YouTube videos because I was like, wow, I didn't know you could do that. And you know, work doesn't have to just be work. You can make it more fun, make it more spicy. And so doing YouTube, educating people, making more content about the cloud, getting into IT, that's something that I want to do. So Lucy, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Okay, so for point number three, I would say this is a combination of key point number one and number two since I kind of went into it already. But I think a day-to-day -day basis would look like this. I wake up, because I work from home, I get to spend my time going to the gym early in the morning. And then after I go to the gym, I have a little bit of time to eat breakfast before my work shift. But now that's nine o'clock, I start work, I clock in. At nine o'clock, I'm gonna maybe work with a customer. So that could take maybe an hour. So from nine to 10 or even from nine to 11, I could be working with the customer. Then in between that time, on Thursdays, I don't have team meetings, but I did have a one-on-one -on -one with a mentor. And so that would take up another 30 minutes. But aside from that, 12 o'clock is lunch. So 12 to one, I'm taking lunch. And then after one, I'm working on another customer case. So that could be between one to two or one to three, it really depends. And then from three to four or three to five, I could be spending that time learning more about a service or I could be writing an article. After I work on a couple of cases and near the end of the day, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and conclude my day by just either wrapping up emails or I could just be, you know, clocking out. And that's basically my day. Um, it sounds very simplified. There's a lot of more things that happen in between, but I don't wanna go too much into detail. That's something that you kind of have to figure out once you become a cloud support engineer. From just looking back, I would say key points one and two already summarize everything that you would do in a nutshell. And that actually concludes my video. So I hope you're able to learn something from this. And maybe if you want to become a cloud support engineer, let me know what you're doing. I want to know what you're doing to apply to the job. Or if you do get the job, tell me how it goes. Is it what you anticipated or is it something different? And last but not least, you should like because if you like and subscribe, it helps me a long way because right now I'm at 300 subscribers and I would say that's actually pretty good. Four months ago, I started off with 12 subscribers and now I'm at 300, that's really crazy. So if you can like and subscribe, you're helping me out a ton. It makes me know that you enjoy watching my videos and I'll continue to post more like this. So thank you so much for watching. It's been a good one. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.